Hey everyone, this is Dr. Green and this video is going to go over how to get set up for CS5010 Fundamentals of Programming. So you'll see I have three tabs open here in my browser. The first thing we're going to want to do is download VS Code. Uh, go ahead and click download for Mac or Windows or whatever you happen to be using. Run that installer and install VS Code. That's going to be the first thing you do. I already have VS Code installed here. You'll see my little icon. Um, so we're in good shape. The second thing you want to do is go to git-scm.com. Uh, this is Git. It is a version control tool. You want to go to Downloads. Pick your download, uh, Mac, Windows, or Linux. Uh, you'll see, depending on where you go, on Mac, they're going to tell you to use Homebrew. On Windows, they're going to have you download it. That download will start immediately. Uh, and on Linux, they're also going to tell you how to install it based on your installation. Go ahead and download that and install it. Uh, there is only one change you want to make during the installation process, and that is when you come to an install screen that asks if you want to use it with third-party tools, if you want to add it to your path. You want to pick the third and final option, which means I want to use it everywhere and I want it added to my path. Uh, on top of that, we will be using GitLab in this class. Uh, this is gitlab.com. You're going to want to go ahead to sign in or register. Um, you can register right there. You see I already have an account and I have two-factor authentication set up which you may or may not set up that's based on your preference. So when I do this it asks me for my code 217537 verify login. Now you will see an empty screen because you don't have any projects uh, but at this point we are ready to start working on our first assignment or first bit of code. So the way that we want to do that, um, I'm going to make it very easy for you. We start by going to New Project. Uh, we name our project. So I believe in this class we have used this naming scheme, CS5010, uh, the summer term and year, right? So this could be fall or spring, the assignment with the two-digit number, and then the name Green, right? So this is my last name. It would be your last name. I'm going to create this as private, as an empty repository. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and create project. Uh-oh, this path has already been taken. I think I've made one too many demo projects. Um, so we're just going to call this AXX at this point. Great. I now see a screen. It has all this great information on it. Uh, it tells me how to set up my Git. It tells me how to create a new repository, push an existing folder, or push an existing Git repository. Since I do not have this code on my computer yet, uh, what I'm going to want to do is I am going to want to clone this repository. And many of you will not be familiar with this process, uh, so just work with me here. First thing we're going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new window, finder window, or explore. I'm going to go to my desktop, uh, or wherever you want to. Go ahead and create yourself a new folder for your class projects. I'm going to call this my class projects or assignments, uh, and you'll see we now have an empty directory. That's great. Okay. Um, now what you can do is open up your terminal, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a new terminal here, a new window. Uh, in Mac or Linux, this is your terminal. On Windows, this would be PowerShell, or you could even use git bash, uh, something like that. Uh, the pwd command will tell me where I am. Um, I know I created my folder on my desktop, so I'm going to use the cd command to change directories. Uh, if you're on Windows, don't use ls. That will not work. You want to use dir for directory listing. You'll see my folder there, my class project. So we're going to switch over there. And we are going to copy this and say git clone. Now, you will notice that this address says git clone, get it, gitlab.com, uh, axxgreen.git. If you want to use this direct address, you will have to do uh, set up SSH keys on your system. There is a wonderful tutorial for doing that at GitLab and SSH keys. I'm not going to walk you through that. This does it step by step and will get you set up regardless of the operating system that you are on. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go ahead and clone that. You'll see I have cloned an empty repository. You'll see my folder exists, and now I am ready to start working. So I'm going to go to VS Code, File, Open. I'm going to navigate to My Class Projects, my folder, and go ahead and open it. 
Okay, we are in good shape. I want to add a new file. I'm going to call it main.cpp. I'm going to put the bare bones in here. Okay, and I am good to go. Now that we are in VS Code, I am going to use the built-in terminal uh, because it's so much more convenient. So I'm going to go new terminal. You'll see I'm in the proper directory. Um, I can say ls. Now we are using version control here, so I can ask it get status and it'll tell me what the status of my files are. You'll see that we have a tab that mimics this over on the left with the status. You'll see I have changes made. Okay? This is an untracked file. So if I can tell you git is a version control system, what it does is it watches the files that we tell it to. When we tell it to, it takes a picture of those and stores it in history. And then it lets us share everything on a remote repository like GitLab or GitHub or something like that. So the basic process we always want to do is when we create a file, we git add it. When we save a file or files, we git commit it. And when we share files or sync, we'll call that share or sync files, we git push it. Okay. So you'll see this process right here. I'm going to say git add main.cpp, git commit minus am, my first commit. And you'll notice this changed up here as well, right? I went from changes to stage changes. And now I'll say git commit minus am, my first commit. Enter, okay, no more changes. I haven't made any changes. And now I can git push. Now you see once this runs, there we go. We can go back to our repository. We can refresh. And there we go. It is beautiful. There is our main.cpp file. Now you will notice that as I worked here in the terminal, things changed up here. That's because I can also use this GUI interface, right? So if I add a little more code here, see how, hello, my beautiful techies. I'll save that file using command S. You'll see I now have changes. Uh, if I wanna look at this, you can see over here, it tells me that my file has been modified. I can stage those changes, I can discard my changes, or I can open the file. Well, I want to stage those changes because I want to make sure they get committed. Okay, now they go to stage changes. To make a commit, I come up here and say my second commit, I'm giving it the message. That's the same as this in between the quotation marks here. I hit enter. Hey, it's committed. And now I can push it using that three dots. Uh, and you'll see, it even asked me down here, would you like code to periodically get fast, fetch? I don't want it to do that. Uh, I'll go back here now, and you will see my main.cpp has the new code. Okay? So this is wonderful. Uh, this is all good, and this is fundamentally how you should be working with Git, GitLab, and VS Code.